Um, so hi everyone, I'm Becky Aldroyd and I'm the Metadata Officer at Closer. And this afternoon, I'll be providing an overview of our DDI Questionnaire Editor Archivist. I'll start by giving some background on what Archivist is and why it was developed. And then I'll highlight some key features of Archivist and our workflow more generally that enable us to produce high quality questionnaire metadata. So first off, what is Archivist? It's an in-house developed open source web application that allows multiple users to enter and edit questionnaire metadata. It allows us to link questions to variables and we can map these to topics or concepts using a controlled vocabulary, which I'll talk more about later on. Archivist creates DDI compliant XML, which can then be loaded into Closer Discovery. Closer Discovery is our flagship product. It's the UK's most detailed search platform for longitudinal population studies, where users can search, explore, and assess questionnaire and dataset metadata from 11 of the UK's leading longitudinal population studies. And they can filter by study, life stage, and topic to discover the dataset that fulfills their research requirements. Our goal was to document over 300 legacy questionnaires into the DDI standard to make these questionnaires discoverable and searchable. At the time, there weren't many options for software that were easy to use and would be suitable for multiple users for this volume of questionnaires. So Archivist was developed so that we could create structured machine readable metadata, which would allow us to turn questionnaires from this, which is an example of an original version of a questionnaire, to this, which is what the questionnaire looks like in Archivist once it's been broken down into DDI elements, and finally to this, which is what the questionnaire looks like in our search platform, Close Discovery. So how do we create this metadata using Archivist? As I mentioned before, Archivist allows us to document questionnaires to DDI standards. So this means that when we're entering the questionnaires, we break them down into various DDI elements, which you can see here on the slide. You don't need to know anything about DDI to do this. You just need to be trained on how to identify the questionnaire elements. So to give you an example, here is one question from a questionnaire. So you can see that this is one question that's been broken down into multiple elements. We have a statement at the top, which gives us some general information. We then have the question text and the question label. This question has a code list, which is a type of response domain that allows participants to choose an answer from a list of predetermined options. And we also have a condition which filters out which participants should answer the following questions. So all the enterer needs to know is how to recognize these different elements so that they can then be put into Archivist. So here we have all of the metadata that you saw on the previous slide in Archivist. And here we have that metadata in our search platform, Closer Discovery. So who can use Archivist? Well, it was developed to simplify the questionnaire entry process. So this means that questionnaire entry is carried out by trained but not technical staff. Staff are trained on questionnaires and metadata content, but they don't need any technical knowledge of DDI or XML. So they can purely concentrate on questionnaire entry and editing. Another advantage of Archivist, particularly in COVID times, is that all of this work can be done remotely. So that's what Archivist does, but what are some of its key features that allow us to produce high quality metadata? One of these features is the ability to reuse code lists and response domains within questionnaires. Having one code list or response domain that can be used for multiple questions means that you only need to enter them once. This is a good quality control measure because the more code lists and response domains that you have to enter from scratch, the higher the likelihood of making a mistake. Also, if you spot a mistake, you only need to amend it once and then it's applied to all of the questions which use that code list or response domain. You can see what questions are associated with a particular code list or response domain underneath it like you can see here on the screen. So when you're making changes, you know exactly which questions it's going to affect. When we reuse code lists and response, we reuse code lists and response domains within questionnaires rather than across all of the questionnaires in the database, because you're more likely to find the same code list and response domains within one questionnaire. Also, it would take a lot of time to search for the correct code list or response domain if you had to look through every one from every questionnaire in the database, particularly because code lists and response domains can only be reused if they're exactly the same. 
If the casing, spelling or code values are different for different questions, a new code list must be created. So you'd have to spend time looking through all the variations of a particular code list or response domain to check it's the right one. So it's not gonna save you any time. A second key feature is the use of asterisks to highlight the minimum amount of metadata required when adding a construct. On the screen, we have an example of adding a question item. You can see that every question must have a label and a literal or question text, but instructions are optional. So this reminds the inputter of what metadata they must include to ensure that we don't have any incomplete or missing metadata entering the database. Another quality control feature is the automated checks which are carried out to catch errors before they reach the database. For example, we don't allow duplicate labels. So if you try to use a label that already exists, Archivist will bring up an error message like the one that you can see on the screen and it won't let you save your changes. We have automated checks for mapping as well as questionnaire entry. So if you map a question to a variable and the question and variable have been mapped to different topics, Archivist will flag that there is a conflict so that you can make sure that both the question and variable are then mapped to the same topic. Another useful feature is the ability to copy a completed questionnaire, which is similar to the one that you're about to enter, and then edit the content in that rather than starting from scratch. This is ideal because completed questionnaires have undergone a rigorous verification process, which I'll describe in a few slides time. And so using content that's already in there means that the inputter can spend more time checking the accuracy and consistency of the information rather than adding responses, questions and constructs from scratch. Of course, not all questionnaires are identical, so the inputter might need to add or remove questions and constructs. But having a verified questionnaire template is still much quicker than building the questionnaire from scratch. So alongside the specific features of Archivist, we also have more general features of our metadata process that enable us to produce high quality metadata. One of those is our controlled vocabulary. So once a questionnaire has been added to Archivist, we map questions and variables to topics using a controlled vocab. This is a list of topic areas that are covered by the study's questionnaires. The closer controlled vocab is a compilation of MESH, which stands for the medical subject headings developed by the National Library of Medicine, and HACCP, which stands for the Humanities and Social Science Electronic Thesaurus, developed by the UK Data Service. The topic vocab has two levels, which you can see highlighted on the screen. In blue, we have the higher level topic, which in this example is mental health and mental processes. And in green, we have the lower level topics, which are mental disorders and personality and temperament. Having a controlled vocab ensures consistency across questionnaires and studies, and it also enables users to more easily search for questions of interest in Closer Discovery. On the screen, you can see that if you go to the Explore page on Closer Discovery, you can find the list of high-level topics, which can be drilled down into the lower-level topics by clicking on the plus sign. Users can then filter questions by topics using the control vocabulary. To ensure that users can find all of the questions which are associated with a particular topic, we map topics in Archivist using a drop-down list to make sure that inconsistencies or errors in the topic names aren't introduced by people using different capitalizations or spelling, for example. As well as the controlled vocab for topics, we also have one for the interviewee, which tells us who is responding to the question, and this is bespoke for closer. So our general metadata workflow is designed to produce questionnaire metadata to the highest possible standard. The first stage of the workflow is questionnaire entry, where questionnaires are entered either by the study or by CLOSER. Every questionnaire is then checked for accuracy and consistency by CLOSER, which is called questionnaire verification. Finally, the verifier passes the questionnaire back to the enterer to make the changes. This process is advantageous because no matter how much time is spent on a questionnaire or how much experience the inputter has, mistakes are always found in verification. So it's essential that the metadata is checked so that the final product is as high quality and error-free as possible. Also, having a feedback loop where the enterer makes the verification changes is ideal because it gives them a chance to learn and improve on their entry the next time around. So now focusing specifically on questionnaire verification, our verification process makes use of multiple tools to try and ensure that the final product is as accurate as possible. 
First, the verifier follows a checklist which highlights what errors they should be looking out for. For example, have all the questions been assigned to the right interviewee, or are there mistakes in spelling, punctuation, and capitalization, for example? We can also make use of the summary tables which are produced in Archivist to highlight labeling errors. In this example, I've searched for C underscore, which is the prefix used for condition labels, to help me easily spot if any conditions don't have the correct label prefix. We have summary tables for all of the constructs in Archivist, so we can easily check the labels for question constructs, loops, statements and sequences, as well as conditions. So once the checklist has been followed and the summary tables have been used, the verifier will then listen to the questionnaire using text-to-speech software to spot errors which might not be captured by reading the questionnaire, because we often read what we expect to see. The final thing that I'd like to mention is the Closer Technical Wiki, which documents the entire questionnaire metadata workflow. This is a really useful tool for training new members of staff, but it's also essential to have a permanent record of the questionnaire metadata guidelines and protocols to ensure that the data are entered accurately and consistently. So I've gone through some of the key features of Archivist and our metadata workflow more generally that allow us to produce high quality metadata. I'm gonna end by summarizing the key lessons learned from our experience of documenting questionnaire metadata. So first, reuse metadata where possible to save time, because once it's been entered correctly, you can use this data again and again. As I previously mentioned, we only do this within questionnaires so that edits don't affect every single questionnaire in the database. Second, use automated checks to flag errors to make sure that you aren't letting incorrect or missing metadata slip through the net. Third, integrate quality control into your metadata workflow. So as I mentioned before, mistakes are always found in verification, so it's a critical step to ensuring high quality metadata. And finally, document your metadata workflow so that there is a clear record of the rules and protocols to make sure that metadata are entered consistently. That's all from me. Thanks very much for your time.